Johnny got a toy golf set when he was three, and from that day on, he was hooked. All he wanted to do was golf, golf, golf. He'd be on the links before school, after school. All he ever wanted was to go pro. And then, one day, when he was holding his grandson and thinking about his 12 handicap, Johnny realized it just might not happen for him. But you know what did happen for him? He switched to Geico and saved a bunch of money on car insurance. So that was good, and so was hanging out with his grandson. Geico presents oh, yet another voicemail from your roommate. Hi! So, about the kitchen. Turns out when there's a grease fire, you're not supposed to throw water on it. <laughs> Who would have known, right? Anyways, the fire department is here, and it's totally cool. Give me a call back when you get a chance. The Geico Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected, like if danger is your roommate's middle name. Visit Geico.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance. Okay, this is Jim the Keys bartender coming to you for episode 184. 184. It's fucking hot. It's, it's fucking hot. It's fucking hot. We're going to put effing on there. This is Africa hot. It is. It is it's become there is it's a mirror on the canal here. Um there's no wind, there's um, no breeze. It's it's the temperature isn't Jim is like moist. Arizona thing. Yeah, you know what? It's just <laughs> it's just very humid. It's um I'm surprised that all the metal isn't just materializing into rust, <laughs> and and then you know, get flop sweat and all that stuff. Uh. I used to work in Tampa unloading fruit trucks when I was a kid, and that was I thought that was that's this is about as hot as that is at this time with the sun going down. Yeah, it's beautiful here. You just gotta acclimate yourself to this stuff. You and get we're acclimate is what you gotta do. You well, gotta I'm, jump in the water. We're acclimated to it. We can right. handle it. We just don't realize we know it's hot. We know when people come down here, they know it's hot. We notice that people driving down here. That's uh, why they in rent the convertibles. Day, they're driving they're their sweating. goddamn convertibles with um, <laughs> the top down. Yes, sweating. Top down was sweating, you know, with the bald heads <laughs> basting in the <laughs> getting sun. Burnt. Getting burnt. Getting, <laughs> getting burnt before they get to their destination. <laughs> Look, I want to, how do I get a sun and wind burn with little effort? We'll drive down the keys. Yes, in a convertible. On a blindingly sunny day <laughs> with the top down. Yes. And you'll look like a fucking, um, one of those red dome lights <laughs> on, a, on a, you know, going down on a, on a police car going down, you know, <laughs> just all red. Just woo, red. Woo, 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 woo. You know, what's funny is that like, you can tell that like the locals, they, like a lot of the locals drive white some cars. Some get burnt. Some, some of the locals get burnt. White cars. Yeah. Well, you can always tell a local here because you get the sunglasses tan, you know, like the raccoon face, like reverse raccoon. I know that looks. Yeah. But, you know, especially the fishermen, you know, the charter captains and stuff like that. I know guys that they wear the face mask and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, my husband has all to that do stuff, that. And they don't get all burn up and stuff yeah. like that. They're smart. Yeah, my husband has to do that because he's a white guy with blonde hair. You know so. what? That's going to be payback in the back. But it is so freaking hot. But there are still people that run in this stuff. Hey, they run in Africa. They run in Africa. They're they running run in, in Africa. They run in Asia. Yeah. They're running there. That's hot. It's too we're, hot we're, to run right we're now. We're in that... In that uh, uh, a community of nations and where areas of the co- uh, world where it just gets hot. I mean, <laughs> there's other places. There are places in like uh, in Iran, I think, in Saudi Arabia, it gets up to like 130 degrees. Yeah. A hundred and th- I don't I care. Know. Dry heat or wet heat. That is incredible. It's, it's like shocking when you take a breath in when you go to something like that. And you're like, <gasps> and it's like hot, just hot air. It's like air. laying a, a freshly baked pizza. On your face. <laughs> or, you know what? It's like this. Like, people that wear glasses, like me, I wear glasses. Yeah. When you open the oven. Yeah. Oh. Right? And they fog and up. It, they fog up, and you can't breathe, because you're like, <gasps> yeah, You suck it hot. in, it goes right in there. Yeah. 500 degrees. <laughs> yep. right in there. That's what, oh. it, that's what it's like right now. Yep. It's, yep. it's hot. Yeah, they go, you see all the air conditioners going, they don't go outside, and here we are outside. <laughs> here we it. are outside. You know what? There's nothing better. I like to be outside. I think we get the... The better keys vibe out here. Yeah, you got to be a little sweaty. Yeah, you got to be able to take it. You know, <laughs> AC wasn't invented until I think it was the nineteen. 
twenty. I don't need. We you don't need to Google. Uh, it. I I know, but I usually I think it was it was really early. The fact checker. I know. You want to check it? Check it. Um, uh, you know, I do it. remember I like watching the like, like like Gatsby yeah. and seeing that they would take like a block of ice with a fan by mm. it, and like just well, the Egyptians used to. You know what the, the Egyptians did? They take a reed, a reed drape, and you wet it, and uh, you put it in your window, and when it's it works, it only works when you have a low humidity. And the act of the wind blowing through and the uh, water evaporating is a coolant process. And it actually cools it by more than several degrees, upwards of 10 degrees. The evaporation process of water when it's dry causes... It was 1902. See? In 1902, a 25-year-old engineer from New York named Willis Carrier invented the first modern... Carrier? Willis Carrier. Yeah, the Carrier. The Carrier ACs, yep. But he also makes furnaces. I know that Carrier makes furnaces too. And uh, yeah. They so really blow. It sent air through watered cooled coils, yep. which was not aimed at human comfort, however. It was designed to control humidity in, the, in a printing plant where he worked. Which they found it applicable. And within a couple of years, they, yeah. they, the first places they started applying that to was the theaters. Sup, once they get cinemas, Once they get cinemas, especially on a hot day, you could charge, not only do you get people to come and see a movie. That's air you're gonna, conditioned. You're gonna go, it's, it's 85 degrees outside, and you get them walking. you someplace in South Florida here, and you got, are you kidding me? And there's not experience in 1930, go to an air-conditioned room. That's so cool. I mean, the height of luxury. I mean, thanks, Willis. Like, yeah. that was really awesome of you. Like, we all appreciate your AC. Like, it's, yeah. all, it's pretty cool. Well, someday... Someday we'll be able to. Someday they'll move, be able to move the Earth further away from the sun. It actually says here what? that it wasn't until 1970 that air conditioning units actually made it into most American homes. Yeah, that's right. My, uh, well, I'm talking, let me. Yeah, give uh, me a little history, a little background there. Uh, I lived in Philadelphia, and uh, it was 19. 19- 1974, 75. I lived in Mayfair, Northeast Philadelphia, in the row home. And we described the histories of Rome in uh, episode 178, uh, shotgun houses. Yeah. And uh, we did not have an air conditioner. We had fans. We had fans. There was no good. In the 75, it didn't even quite, didn't say make it in most homes. Some places. We were lower middle class. We were, we were lower middle class. And then uh, w- when uh, we moved back to the father at some of the military housing, they had the AC. And then AC units started showing up. And you had your basement, the basements that were below ground, that were always a little cooler. Just but they like, were kind of muggy. They were muggy. They were kind of muggy and... and cooler, but damp. Damp and uh, moldy. Uh, but it was until for us, it was we didn't have central air in our house until we didn't have central air at all in the house that we moved into when I was in high school. Every house I lived subsequent after the n- mid 1980s had central air, and it is an imperative in those places that can get up to a hundred. To sometimes, if because of the way they insulate the houses, ah. the way the houses are insulated nowadays, it used to, people were a lot tougher then, and our hottest years were. But it's so hot down here, and I remember my, I, I had to convince my grandmother. My house when I lived in the far northeast near the um, border of the city to get a air conditioner. We put an air conditioner in her, in her room so we can get it at night so she can go to sleep when it's 75 degrees. And she thought she didn't want it because it would make her sick. Oh, right. She was born in 1908. Mm-hmm. And the air conditioner was foreign to her. And uh, we had air conditioning uh, on our main level where the living room and the kitchen was and it would always make the I had a room in the basement I had a room in the basement and if they had left that AC on my room was at uh, coldest in the house I had a Greg Brady room did you watch the Brady Bunch at all? are you talking about with the curved ceilings and stuff? no Greg oh you were in the basement well I was in the basement Greg Brady had an attic room I had an attic I had a room. basement room under the steps but it, 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 I, had, I figured I looked at it and I said 
I could put a bed under it. I could put my dresser right at the foot of the steps where the steps cut in and go down. And the rec room would be my living room. It's like the whole downstairs was my apartment. And there was a half bathroom down there so I can shave and do stuff. I'd just go upstairs and shower. There were two showers um, on the third floor of the house. I was first floor basement, you know, because it wasn't all the way underground. Because right. the, the sliding glass doors open to the backyard. Oh, so it was so kind of like I was Yes, it wasn't really like a basement. And the side of my room was underground and, and the half. doorway and the end of, one end of my room was the uh, laundry room and then the garage. So it for a high school kid from a I say at that point we were middle class. We were middle middle class. Okay. Middle middle class. We weren't upper middle class, we weren't lower middle class, we were middle middle class. And that's when, when I go to sleep at night and I had to use a blanket. It wasn't until in the 90s, I think. Until the 1990s, when I got out of, uh, when I first moved into place after the Navy, um, that my roommate would set the, it would be July, and the AC, I didn't know the setting could go to 66. I had to get a comforter out. Yeah. And it was 90, 90 degrees at night. I had to put a comforter on. And then I'd build the bill. And when we get in these discussions, right? When someone you room with has an unusual requirement for something being cold and has to get it really low because they have high blood pressure, are you responsible for paying half of that bill? And I said, you know what? I'm perfectly fine with it at 75. 75 degrees. Nine degrees warmer. And I don't know what the breakdown, but I imagine that bill would have been half. Yikes. Because getting something 24 degrees cooler versus 14 or 15 degrees cooler, I, I, I would have been happy at 77, 76. Right. I could sleep fine. Make it dry. Well, if, as long as it's running when it's humid and it's running, thing, it keeps the place dry. I'm fine. If you get it under 80 and it's dry, and when it's down here... That's, this is the nuances of it. When you're up in a dry area, when it's 80 degrees and it's dry, it's great. And it's 85, it's great. 90, it's great when it's dry. Your you're, you know, fucking uh, sweat wicks away from your body, evaporates. The natural cooling process, which I mentioned, mentioned with the right. Egyptians with the straw mats over the windows. Yeah. Uh, but when it's humid, that when you sweat, that stays there. Humidity does not take it away from your body and just lays on your body like an insulator. So I can't think. So I don't think I've ever been anywhere where it's been dry heat. Like well, I'm from Minneapolis. Arizona? And, no, I've never like. Well, I've never lived there. I can't remember. You've been a place where is it here? This is not dry here, heat. No, no. But sometimes when the humidity drops, you feel when you feel it, it. There's not a significant drop. It could be like a two or three degree drop in temperature. But if the dry air comes in, let's say it comes in from. The like, northwest. Okay. Let's say a wind comes in from the northwest and something, and you feel that temperature drop, and it, it's not a temperature drop; it's a humidity drop, and that's just your that your, the temperature drops, and all of a sudden the that sweat starts wicking away from your body. And we just seem to put up with it. Well, we that's just I just kind of deal with it. But I'm I'm from Minneapolis, and most people are like, "Oh, that's so cold up there." I mean, like four months out of the year, I will tell you, it's hot up there. It gets hotter up there sometimes than it does here. Well, that's where it makes it harder for people because they never. I think you you get acclimated to the it's, extreme cl- cold, and then it gets super hot, and you had a month and a half. I mean, you, 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 you're, you're, I'm, I'm here in places up there. Uh, uh, three weeks ago, there was still snow. It was still snowing. In upstate New York, three weeks yeah, ago, crazy. three four weeks ago, but then guys again, are sending pictures. Three the weeks lake, ago, lake you get that lake effect humidity, just like you get lake effect snow, mm-hmm. and like Minnesota is like the land of ten thousand lakes. So of course everything is stagnant water, just sitting there getting hot, and like it's humid. It well, I'm just saying when it's gross. bouncing between uh, forty to fifty degrees, your body doesn't have a chance to acclimate. Right. It's just like walking out from here into a. Fr- you, you can walk into, uh, if you're working on our business, you go into a freezer. Holy shit. Well, especially if you're sweaty. If you're sweaty and you walk and into you a freezer. And you hold into it. No, it feels great. It feels great. But if you got locked in there, I imagine your survivability would be much less than a person that was uh, less holding at like 50, 60 degrees. Right. If you're walking around 50, 60 degrees and walk into a place that's real cold, 
you're feeling a 20 degree, 20, 30 degree drop, right. you're going to be able to go and handle it. You know, 100 I mean? degree so, yeah. drop. You know? <laughs> right. Well, um, I was just, I'm texting my mom and she's not answering me yet, but I was just like, I wanted to know when we first got AC because I think, like, we never had, we never had um, central the AC. Places, the places up north, they didn't have to have central AC because you're thinking you only have to tough it out for three months. Right. And they go, we can do that. What we need is a good insulation and to be able to survive the cold. Right. Because the heat, though it can kill you, it's the way to get it. But they don't understand, like, when it spikes up to 105 in a place like Chicago, uh. in the cities and, and stuff like that, it's just impossible. I couldn't Im- I mean, at least here, we're looking at the water. Yeah. I mean, if I get too hot, I'll just go jump in it. Mm. Or I have a dock shower right there. Yeah, if I burst on, if I burst, spontaneously come back. Yes. I I have a place to run. Just like um, Faramir and (laughs) Faramir's father in Lord of the Rings. I've never seen Lord of the Rings. It was in The Return of the King when he set himself on fire. If you spontaneously combust, I will just shove you into the water and it'll be fine. You can't do that. You're going to, if if I'm going to, if I'm going to spontaneously combust, you don't already be dead. <laughs> I don't want to be only com- reason covered I say in that. No, no, that was a, that was uh, was a, from another that was another note from. Um, but you're sitting behind no, the bar no, right now. I from, might be no, no. It's protected. from it's from the office, oh. the show, the office, and Dwight Schrute had a, a letter, and people were reading the letter, and it's in case of emergency, in, in case some um, something or something like this. Uh, please call so and so, uh, and if you're reading this, and uh, I'm about to die. Everyone in the office is already dead. <laughs> so they don't know if it seems he's going to kill them oh, or, or anything like that. Gosh. It was great. Um, um, speaking of that, we were um, talking about that last quote. We were, we, we were we talking about the last quote. Time ago. It was, uh, uh, I, I, this is where, a, because American history is big. We talked about it. It's not deep. American history is not deep. It's only, American history is less than 200 and. 50 years, so when you consider the United States from the Declaration of Independence to, to the present day. But we are, the history is big. American history is big, meaning big. It constitutes a lot of things spanning the globe, much like Britain over the last several years spanned the globe and had a lot of impact. There's a lot of smaller countries that are older, but we've had, in the last 100 years, it's so one thing I'm proud. We had a big effect on the world. Yes, that's very the true. The U.S. has, and relatively quickly. Much like Rome, Greece, Britain. Am I missing someone? France. Spain. 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 Portugal. Yeah. Spain. Spain had a huge empire for a time. Um, the ch- China. Mm-hmm. China, the ancient uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, the Mongol Empire. Yeah. Oh, the Mongol yeah. Empire was hundreds. The Persian, uh, the shorter-lived Macedonian, the Greek. Uh, we have a a big influential history, and one of the things is we were thinking about. It's a, it's a relatively short history if you think about it compared it, it, to these other countries is. called, but a lot of things happen. And the statement was I made was a rising ship, a uh, rising tide. Raises all ships. Well, and, yes. and we thought it was from the Depression because it sounds like we, when anybody, is, if you're a, 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 a student of history, you think that sounds like something that would happen during the Depression and then you want to pump up the economy, get everyone going. And actually there were other regressions and, and, and depressions that occurred. And in the early 60s, there was a slowdown again because uh, the rest of the world was catching up. And you yes. and, and Jenna brought and, to my attention. We thought it was we, Roosevelt. We thought it was Roosevelt, and then we were questioning ourselves. And then I looked it up from the last episode. But it's actually the aphorism. The aphorism is a rising tide lifts all boats. Yes. And it was. it was JFK that said it, and it was associated with the idea that an improved economy will benefit all participants. Yes. Right. So basically, just you know, particularly the government economic yes. policy, therefore focus on a broad economic efforts. But then after we were talking about that and I pointed out that it was JFK, then Jim had this great idea about talking about like um Well I said I said he hey he was a good looking guy. I mean people thought 
if you think of it, he was 42, 43 years old when he became president. He was young, vibrant. Previous to him, previous to him, he came to Eisenhower. Eisenhower was uh, around his age, maybe a, around his age, uh, maybe a little older during World War II. Around World War II, yeah. and and um, he became president as an older man. And prior to him was Truman, who was no spring chicken. And then it was Roosevelt, who was debilitated through polio. And then you had Hoover. Coolidge, Harding. Oh man, I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm backing up through the ones in Harding, and then maybe Wilson. No, Cleveland. I miss Cleveland in there. Cleveland, Wilson, Taft. Sorry, I'm laughing. Am I screwing up? No, no, I'm just laughing at my mom because I asked her about when did we first get air conditioning and was it before I was born? Because I was born in 76. And she just answered me back. And she said, AC? Question mark. What's AC? (laughs) Air conditioning. Oh, she doesn't know what AC is? And then she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, before you were born. When we first moved into the Washburn house, we had a new furnace and window units. Window units. Window right. units, and only in certain bedrooms. Oh, and then she's, you were, she's actually listening right now to a different podcast, a previous podcast that we just published, and she's listening to Male Enhancement, and she's crying laughing at She the likes moment. it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. She's, she, she's, she's, okay, she's well, loving your humor. She always does. She does? Well, yes. Well, yeah, you know this about FG. Okay. I, well, I she appreciate loves her it, some Jim. Uh, um, thank you, Gloria. And we've, we've never formally met yet, and I know we've never spoke to each other. We're... We're going to figure out how to do the Skype talk and uh, maybe when I'm in... <laughs> what? Like she says that she would shit anywhere, anytime for big money. Big money. So they big see money. what I mean? She goes, right. she has her eyes on the prize. Right. As in episode uh, 179 uh, yep. uh, that we were referring to, do you poop enough, uh, an a infomercial. And, and we're talking about bashful poopers. Uh, and not that, you know, actually it is a, a solitary event. It really is. Uh, it, it really is. Oh but goodness. if you were paid big money. And oh, the other thing I meant to mistake, and I mentioned the deer hunter. We did the deer hunter in the uh, yes, now. Uh, uh, 200,000 seat stadium. Unless there's one in Qatar for the World Cup that's coming up in uh, two, three years. <laughs> I don't think there's a 200,000 seat stadium out there. That when I mentioned that in that in the just in the just released or the 180. Oh, it's episode 180. Yeah, I just gave away half the 180. I know, I know. Episode 180. You gotta let We're talking listen, about listen. things that aren't even released yet. But then again, you're not going to know because you're not going to listen to this until after 180. So okay. it's all right. All right. I can talk about it. I can talk about it now, and we're not. Hurting him. So we talked about the best looking best president. Best looking president. Okay, best so president. so we, let's start out. Let's talk with the founding fathers. I have got founding fathers. The, Jefferson was probably the hottest one. Possibly, if you're going back that far. But I have. I mean, the, Washington. Uh, he didn't have wooden teeth. I have the top ten best looking, according to Ranker. I have the top ten best looking presidents. Okay, wait. In the history of time. What the fuck is that? Harding. Oh, that's Harding as a young man. So Harding doesn't count. Is, doesn't right? count. Doesn't. Well, Wait, hold on, hold on. Saying. Before you say anything, okay. I want to give you my rank. I'm going to give you my rank okay, before you look at it. Give me the rank. Uh, Kennedy, Reagan, Jefferson, um, God. <laughs> I don't know. Ah. Uh, so you're going Kennedy I one. Mean, uh, um, Lincoln, one of our greatest presidents, was not one of our best looking presidents. He was not, but you oh, know. Oh, Roosevelt, the Roosevelt, younger Ro- young, Ro- the younger Roosevelt. Yes, when I say the younger Roosevelt, Teddy I, Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt was a handsome bugger with his glasses, very stylish. Yes. Teddy Roosevelt's up there. So I'm going to go with the big, my big uh, four are Kennedy, Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and Reagan. Okay. What do you got? Okay. Let's hear the, hear, hear the ranking. And then I'm going to talk about speculating future uh, uh, ones. Okay. So top 10, according to Ranker, the 10, number 10 is Warren Harding. Uh, that's his. That's he an was old the picture. 29th president. And of course, this was, yeah, I mean, that's it was before he was president. Yeah, it, he, he was young, young, like young. That. Now, number nine, Calvin Coolidge. Silent Cal. Calvin Coolidge. Oh, he was a, he was a nice right? looking guy. So in his younger years, well, again, he, yeah, he looked like a right? total dickhead then. Um, he kind of looks like a douche, actually. Who's that guy? 
This number eight is George W. Bush, even with his unibrow you on Ranker. You know right? what? He was. Yeah, okay. I, I, he looks like, you know who I think he looks like? I think he looks like Ted Bundy in that picture. He does look like Ted Bundy. Right, okay. But he's a nice looking guy. He's a handsome guy. So but Laura Bush is a nice looking woman. Right. Um, number seven was Richard Nixon. Let's see him. Richard Holy Nixon. shit. Right? Like he Nixon had, like, as a young guy? Nixon as a he, young guy? Okay, wait, let's see that picture again. Yeah, right? I mean, this is not so bad. This is not too bad. He looks like guy. guy he looks like the guy. There's an actor named Nixon. Nixon, who was in Office Space. You ever seen that movie, no. Office Space? Oh, yeah, I have seen Office Space. He looks, like a young, he looks like oh, him. Oh, I know who you're talking about. He was also in that Band of Brothers. Tony, let me see that picture yeah. again. Yeah, okay, here we go. One, one more time. There you Holy go. So shit. Richard Nixon, Nixon, he looks like he was like up, in wearing buddy. athletic looking, gear. He was a nice something. guy. All right. So number six is George. The father. H.W. Bush. Handsome in his bastard. younger years okay. as well. And he's also wearing, I yeah. believe, like a collar. Oh, I yeah. He was, he's wearing a Yale shirt. I'm going to take Obama. And then number five is Barack Obama. Obama. See? Oh, I threw Obama in before. Yeah, even, Did I do it before I saw even, it? You you said it earlier when we I you, said it earlier, I when forgot we that, were right. off, when we were Barack not Obama is a handsome son of a bitch. And then um number four Teddy is Franklin Teddy. Roosevelt. Oh, the, that's him younger. Right? They're he had his baggy younger, eyes and stuff like that. And then Teddy's gonna be in there. All right, and then number three they have is Ronald Reagan, of course, in his yeah. Ronald years. Reagan's fucking actor, you know. He yeah, and it was big blue eyes. Yep, good looking uh, dude. They were, number two was Rutherford B. Hayes, the nineteenth president, eighteen seventy seven to eighteen. Let me see. They got some good pictures. On uh, oh, sorry, in office from eighteen seventy seven to eighteen eighty one, and uh, yeah, he. It's a very old, old. Oh, it's, it oh, looks like a tin type. Holy shit, that guy's... He, he's a good He's got a, uh, a mulling kind of dark... He does. Look. He's got like the real wide yeah. set like face. And then, of course, they have on their list as number one as JFK, who I just don't find JFK. that attractive. JFK was the guy. But you know what? He really needed to get some stuff for under his eyes. Yeah. Well, he had a, he was a, a, a drug addict. Oh, is that why his eyes are poofy? Yeah, yeah. He what was, was he addicted addict. to? He get painkillers. Like what? Like opioids? For Atchison's disease. Atchison's? Atchison's disease. What is that? What I don't know. The what pain? It's like almost uh, like fiber. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. He he was prescribed a lot of painkillers and stuff like that. Yikes! Kind of fucked him up. But I'm surprised Teddy Roosevelt had some style to him and stuff like that. He he must have been charming as hell. He got, Teddy Roosevelt was given a speech. Oh wait, got shot. Got shot, and it wasn't life threatening. It hit him in the body. Got shot. Assassination attempt. Okay. And gave a speech before seeking medical attention. So he had like a bullet in, in his body. In, in his like what torso? It, it's like an upper body. Oh my god! And it wasn't like near his heart. That's so crazy. No, but you, you could Google that. It's true. He he was shot, and he he was he was among our toughest presidents, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt. a Republican, might I add? But you know what? It was virtually 100 years ago, and they were different then. And this Teddy Roosevelt wouldn't put up with the shit that was being put up with nowadays. I he was shot I, during a speech. And he said, continued. Yeah. So when Teddy Roosevelt was shot in 1912, a speech may have saved his life. It takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Mm -hmm. He reached into his coat pocket, pulled out a bullet-riddled 50-page speech. Holding it up with prepared remarks, which he had two big holes blown through each page. So the speech that he had in his pocket is what saved his saved him from the bullet penetrating his body. But he didn't stop. No. Well, I think no. I don't uh, know. I think he. I think it. I think it went into his skin. It takes more than that to kill a bull moose. I think that's cool. Uh, what, a thicker paper. Thicker paper. what a badass! What a badass! Oh, moment. there's Tyler. It here. was a fifty-page speech. Yep. Been and holding it up th through his prepared remarks, which had two big holes blown through each oh. page, he continued. And uh, you know what? Since we're in the Keys, uh, um, uh, George H. W. Bush used to go down to Chica Lodge. Yeah. Yeah. He was a big President, uh, fisherman. President Obama yeah. went up to Ocean Reef. Yes. Well, we, there is a and presidential Joe Biden, estate and Joe Biden, in Ocean And Joe Reef. Biden stayed in North Key Largo. Joe Biden likes uh, uh, Jimmy Carter comes down here regularly for Habitat for Humanity. Oh, that's oh cool. he's been in our Publix. Oh, 
Oh. Oh, my God. I love that guy. <laughs> I do. You know, listen, politics aside, you can't fucking hate Demi Carter. I believe he was the president the year I was born. No, I, well, I mean, was, politics I aside, so. you know, whether he's a good man, if anybody wanted to say, uh, I thought he was a good president, but everyone should agree Jimmy Carter is a good man. Yeah. Because that guy in his 90s is still putting houses up for, I mean, still his. now? Oh, yeah. He straps on, he straps on the tool belt and does that thing. Yeah, still now. And he always diagnosed with cancer uh, two years ago. And he's still doing it. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Carter's still out there doing it. Jimmy Carter's a, 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 a still giving uh, still giving interviews and stuff like that. Okay, that and so then let's cool. get back to the big guy for the keys. Uh, I would like to say the big guy so it's Truman, because the um, the Southern White House is in Key West. Oh, the Truman it, House, yes. The Truman House, yep. and it is a big uh, thing. And Truman. Uh, has a lot to do with the spunkiness of the keys because uh, when Truman was originally, he filled out, he was a vice president under Roosevelt, he filled out his term, and then... This is what we were talking about. Why when he no was president. getting elected, yes, uh, the, the polls showed that um, his opponent would win and papers, a whole bunch of papers printed up. Uh, uh, so do we, do we? Dewey okay. was his opponent. So Dewey wins, and uh, Truman holds up a picture of a newsprint when he wins the amount of electors that he needs to win, and it says, uh, Dewey wins, and Truman's the winner. And Truman was a guy, and his famous saying was, the buck stops here. Take a responsibility oh, yeah, for yeah. bad results or bad decisions. And Truman was... Um, a leader of character, much as George H.W. was of character. Yes. He did the assault whip. He was a Republican that supported an assault weapon ban, mm-hmm. which was uh, not popular with the NRA, and he's being a Republican. Uh, and then you have uh, Barack Obama accused of whatever he was. I still think he was a great president, and Joe Biden was a great vice president. I'm sure there was other presidents that came down here. But uh, those are the three big ones. We had other people like uh, Ted Williams. We're going to move on to another great thing, and it is uh, it's very patriotic. Jenna? Yes. I hear that you're a listener. You told me you were a listener and you're a follower of the U.S. women's soccer team. Yeah, well, I uh, let me tell recently you what happened I've been watching it. I've been watching them since the 90s. Okay. When they dominate, they started dominating. The U.S. women's soccer, it's been such a dominant force. In the women's, and you can say whether it's more competitive or not, they consistently, U.S. women's soccer has been more competitive and has been at the top and always has been since the 90s considered a powerhouse. And here they come into the World Cup. They got such a deep team. And I'm not a soccer person, but they won against their first round against Thailand. And the previous, the previous record was by a blowout was um, was some other Germany versus some other team in 2006. It was 12 to nothing. The U.S. did 13 nothing against Thailand. And they were on the attack the whole time. Their, their credo is they never let up, and that's their thing. Whether they're behind or whether they're ahead, they're going to... They're, they're, they don't want to dishonor Just their opponent. They don't right. want to dishonor their opponent and start by laughing. laying back and right. laying back and saying, like a kid, like you would against a kid, you just do what you can do. And I think if you're a valorous opponent, you would want that. Right. Yeah, you don't want them to slow down and, and, just and then put in all the like, fourth the looks string people. of those women and the way they did it and the way they set themselves up and the way they charged down the field and the way... They kept on going, kept on going, kept on going, pounding, 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 and kept on attacking. They were relentless. Right. They were relentless, much like the European teams are when they play the U.S. men's. And the U.S. men's, I had to say, are poor, a poor example of U.S. manhood. Well, it's just an example the way it is. In comparison to the women's team. In in comparison to the women's team, the U.S. men, when they achieve mediocre success, they are lauded. And uh, the U.S. women's team, and it's, I may you lose uh, uh, listeners for this, but the U.S. women's soccer team is, is uh, championing 
a women's equality uh, uh, parity in pay. And there were some statistics I saw. And one of the uh, statistics said, and they showed the pay charts for the U.S. women's team and the U.S. men's team. If the, can you, you got me one? If the U.S. men's team lost all their games in the process of, of the year, the players would get 200, and I'm going to go lower, 250,000. Lost all their games for losing. for losing. If the U.S. women's team wins all their games, meaning all the way through, the maximum they can make is 99000 with their bonus. Two and a half times less. And it could be as great as three times less. Now, that's the best achievement to U.S. women's and the worst achievement men. So you can imagine what it could be if the men achieved the same and the women. But the argument for the men... And uh, the soccer, U.S. women's soccer, is saying the men's soccer is more popular. But where they don't factor in is the followers in our country follow U.S. women's soccer so much more greatly, and they make so much more money from advertising everything, sales, ticket sales and stuff, from a winning U.S. soccer uh, women's U.S. soccer team is so much more profitable to U.S. W- women's soccer, which is much more profitable than U.S. men's soccer because of the lack of success. And I, I'm not a traitor to my gender. It's just a fact. Right. If we were Brazil, if we were France, if we were Germany, and they were the men, yes. And you could scale it down to say if we generate, if they generate $500 million in revenue... And then you could say, you could justify that. But when the U.S. women's soccer team is generating more, more money, revenue. more revenue, and making two and a half times less, then there is something wrong. And it yep. brings to mind, in 1979, in 1983, the expiration of the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment. Yes. Expired. Yeah. Because only 36 or 37 states... Uh, passed because it was going to become a constitutional amendment. So they put in amendment to guarantee that gender would not be a basis for discrimination. I and I always I, I don't know if you're long and once again I'll repeat once again if you're a long time listener. I believe challenge and fortitude. If I'm challenged. I have to work harder if I want to achieve. If I'm working against a harder opponent, I have to be better if I need to win or compare or be on the par or whatever you want to do, whatever field you're in. I have to work harder and achieve. I don't need a step up. I don't need an artificial pay scale. Right. So then if I produce their salaries off of the revenue that they produce and their wins. Oh, Tyler, you're you you're know, preaching to the choir. I, but that's what you're I'm You're preaching to the choir. You know? That's what they're talking about. Yeah. But they're talking, what they look at, what they look at is men's soccer in general, worldwide, is more popular. The Men's World Cup. But when it comes to the U.S. audience and where we derive the income, where the income goes in the to the organization that pays the salary if they achieve more profit. That's exactly what you said, that it should be commensurate with the success. Right. And the failure of this company, uh, this company, um, we're capitalist Organ- society, o- organization. country, yeah. company, country, whatever, yeah. our, our organization mm-hmm. is when we're regressive. And that's regressive. If, you, if a man want to achieve, if you want to be superstars, if you want to make 250000 and you don't get 250000 by losing to Jamaica, and not that Jamaica is a subpar country. They're a country of about 10 million people, but we're a country of 350 million people. We should be able to field a soccer team that can stand up to Jamaica. And we lose to smaller countries. We don't make it up to Germany. We don't make it up to Mexico's level. We barely make it up to smaller country levels, and those countries achieve more. 
And we are a powerful country. And the American women will defeat China. They will defeat traditional uh, soccer countries. They'll dominate them. Yeah. They are terrified of the American women. Ter- much like, well, much American like we women know, are much tough. like, and I'll say basketball, basketball achieves that level. A basketball achieves that. Level. What I was going to say is just over the last two days while we were traveling, we stopped at Buffalo Wild Wings twice on the way out of town, on the way back yeah. into town. And we, both days, they had women's soccer on there. And I will tell you, watching them compared to the men's soccer that I've watched yeah. in the past, those are tough. Those girls. women get down and dirty a lot more than our men do. And they don't cry when nope. they fall, and they charge downfield. They charge downfield hard. They charge downfield hard. I saw those women. They're steely-eyed competitors, and they go and do it. And I swear to God, that's where I think um, the U.S. is getting it right. It's been getting it right with parity of men. We're working hard. Our population is working hard to do it. Our women in the military, much like the, um, I don't know if Israel did champion that originally, but they needed to because they didn't have the population. But the U.S. Well, is getting it. Women in the military, they achieve it. Our first, uh, our first commander of a division, of an infantry division, was uh, this week a woman. An Army Infantry Division, the first commander of a division, was appointed uh, a former Black Hawk helicopter pilot, which appointed to them. And if you can achieve from, okay, this is where I'm defeating my argument. If they are fighting against injustice and being set back further and achieving, then maybe these things like when black people end up going to Oxford... Well, I'm African Americans, despite not being chosen at the same rate, that makes them stronger. So, thinking that privilege, privilege kills incentives and does not make you stronger, makes you weaker. A resistance, um, much like resistance training, where I'm from, in, in, in a way, being able to work hard is a quality that allows you to achieve. And, uh, America, and uh, we, can, we, we are great because of things like the American women's soccer team, the U.S., uh, United States soccer team, the armed forces that we have that always, and I, I dispel the rumors that we lost Vietnam. We did not lose Vietnam. We went uh, around the world. We we're fighting in a country. Uh, we, we necessarily, I don't think we should have been fighting in. We find a war was sure to be lost because the only way to win a fight like that is obliterating the population. Oh my god! Because you're always going to. Uh, but we we won almost every war we fought in. We won. We've lasted. We fought at disadvantages in 1812, uh, American Revolution. We survived a civil war. Uh, we we went over and helped out in World War One. We tipped the balance in World War Two. We sur- uh, survived it in the Korean War. We went and tried to preserve the French Empire in Vietnam, which I thought was a mistake. But the men that served and the women that served are, are heroes. And and whenever we had to address any terrorist attacks, we went over and kicked butt. And we will when we do persevere. When we do do that, we do do win out. Well, and that's to me. I'm I'm not a huge history buff. I I follow very little of our mm. past, which I wish I did more. But in my aspect as a '90s generation, yeah. when I look at what the United States is, yes, are there wars that we're fighting that we shouldn't be in? I'm yes. sure. But that's what makes America America, and this is why we are who we are. Is because no matter whose war it is. Whose fight it is, we try and help out and we move on to help other people. We countries. try to pick the right side. We, we try and make to try to pick the right side. everybody's life a little bit better. I, I, you know, I'm just going to jump off topic for a second because you corrected yourself with the whole uh, deer hunter versus yes, apocalypse, apocalypse nothing. And when we were talking about pooping yeah. on episode 180... Which my mother is listening to now. Are we supposed to poop every time we eat? No, um, I said something <laughs> about a diuretic. Like a diuretic with it's you. It's for urine, no, it's, isn't it? Yes, and that's what mom just I said. She was that, like, yeah. she was like, you're an ass. <laughs> she called me an ass, and she said that it, a diuretic is a substance that promotes diuresis, which is increased production of urine, and it helps your body lose fluid levels. Fluids. So I am sorry, a diuretic. I thought a diuretic was something that would promote diarrhea. 
You know, on that note, because it I think sounds I gotta so go similar. Can I, you, can I go over and urinate right. the canal on the? Uh, so, mom, I am I? sorry. Yeah. I have been corrected. Okay. My neighbors don't care. You could, yes, you you I can pee up. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Well, Sean does it all the time. I just want to see if I can ask and do it. I'm not gonna do it. Sean, Sean, the neighbor guy, Sean does it all the time. You know why I won't do it? Not out of respect for your neighbors. Answer. Because he doesn't want it to drop in the water. <laughs> no, no, no. Out of respect for you. Out of respect for you. I'm you don't want to get you. salt water on your weenie? Not respecting your neighbors, respecting you. <laughs> I pee off my dog all the time. I know, but that's my your choice. My neighbor comes over and hangs out and pees off my dog. He does, that's he does. Your cho- that's your choice. It's out of respect for you. It's out of respect for you. you, you. Piss off my dog. I know, no, my but dog. when I'm over someone's house, and I, you see how quickly we turn from the thing. <laughs> oh my gosh! I made my thing. It's perfect. Okay, I'm not going to do it. America, gonna, America. Uh, All right, I, I also, could definitely poop off the dock. I'm ju- I'm also dock. supposed to let you know what that um, her cat, my mother's cat, um, his name is Bob. Robert. McFeeline. Oh, she listened to it. So Bob she cat. Had- well, his name, uh, his formal name is Robert McFeline. Yeah. but she calls him Bobcat. Um, he is snuggled up to her phone, and so he, he can't even because he loves Jim, the keys bartender. So, mom's cat Bob is is a avid listener. Pussy loves him, man. And I'm just saying, <laughs> I mean, he, saying. he's a guy. Oh my god, it was perfect. He's a guy cat, <laughs> oh, and he's a mean coon, would, yeah. but he's still a cat. So, oh, I'm well, thinking, okay, you so know, what? there you go. Sausage and tacos. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're trying to. We're trying to attract all different uh, demographics. You know what I should do on my next batch of what? business cards? What? Is put our... This is Tyler Kelly. He's bartender on there as well. Sure, you know, yeah, whenever you want. Oh, um, uh, I did mention to my friend uh, Dan Cornell. We're going to wrap this one. Oh, we were talking uh, about the uh, cash tiki. Cash tiki. He liked it. Yeah, it's like cash cab. Okay. Uh, we will... Um, take him out to a specific destination, give him a free ride. But if they don't get all the questions right, they get stranded. They get dumped <laughs> off the tiki. It's a tiki floating bar with a motor. Oh, we know about this. Is this the one out of Snooks? Uh. There's more than one. He has about four right now. He may have more. Well, um, he was supposed to have three, and I was supposed to work for him. That's all right. It, we don't. We, that's just, all right. We can just part leave that that. There. Hey, we're bigger than that. It doesn't matter. So, but I'm thinking instead of, and I was thinking about doing a crocodile lake that would add a note of interesting suspense. Uh, listeners, Crocodile Lake is called Crocodile Lake for a reason because it's a spawning ground for American crocodiles. And uh, it should have a lot of them there. So it should provide a lot of incentive for people to answer. But I don't think I'm going to do it from there. And I think maybe we could put a sad dinghy like a two to three person dinghy behind and drag it and give them the water where we drink champagne and beer on the tiki bar while we're doing it. And I'll make it more of a, I, I still so haven't gotten, like I still haven't had a, uh, in a way where I, I haven't had a response from Ben Bailey, but I don't think Ben Bailey needs to respond. I got to contact his production company. Uh, ben Bailey's the host of uh, cash cab. Yeah. He's a follower of uh, ours. On Remind me again, what number Twitter. are we on? We're on 184. Four. One, okay. I think 184. Mom is sure. mom. Mom and Bobcat are are binge listening right now, and she's blowing up okay. my phone. So I'm so just making no, sure. no. But 180 uh, will be coming up, and then next. She's week we'll listening have to 180 right now. So 180, 180 is released. Uh, we have uh, until uh, we get you. big enough. If we get big enough, we'll have a sound guy with us all the time. Okay. The only way to get big enough in it is for me to probably stay on topic. Number two is to have more <laughs> listeners and more reviews. We currently have 14 reviews, which I'm surprised, on iTunes, which is good. iTunes? We have iHeartRadio. We get 25 to 30. The next tier on that, I'd like to get 25 to 30. Uh, yesterday, if it's anecdotal. If um, the company we're working with, it seems like we had an additional... Um, a, a, a 50 to 60% bump in listenership in just the one episode. Uh, they haven't uh, started with the media, social media yet, but they seem adept at handling sound and putting it up uh, on, on the sites. And we're hoping that the cross 
thing will increase listenership. That that is, we still believe it's our job to provide a quality podcast, even though we are partaking. We and are. I'm partaking. partaking. We are partaking. That's um, it. Mom has a good idea for what? heroin. Next heroin episode. use. She wants to talk about waxing patterns. Different patterns for you to wax your parts. We can talk about that maybe next time. You think I should get my private parts waxed? Well, she says she wants to talk about Br- Brazilian racetracks, for example. <laughs> and I did see I about would the consider, salon. I would consider salon. getting a... Hmm. There, there is a salon out there, you know, for men. Well, there's a, there's a, a, a little video coming on Facebook. Uh, yes, yeah, man, yes. The one you and the manscaping one. one, yeah. And yeah. the guy would take that selfies doesn't... next to the junk and show off his... Like, yep. So uh, I was not impressed. No, and I I didn't think it was expert. Back to our reviews and listeners and all that stuff. So since I'm a new company up and coming, yes, um, you know, you say whatever you want. If there are other people or our listeners that are expecting or wanting to travel down here to the Keys, you know, if you're an avid listener and you reach out to me, you know, we could give percentages off. We would um, ask you to address our. Our, uh, uh, our partner, yes. 43 Keys Media. 43 Keys Media, we'll go through them because yep. yes. they'll come up with it. This way we won't have to negotiate and we don't have to be the bad guys. And they're not saying 43 Keys Media is the bad guys. No. But they're the company that's handling that and that's what we're doing it. And uh, they, they, we give them a chance. They do put a lot of work in this show. They can do it and they can figure out how to do it. We'll, we'll get the numbers for them, the contact. If you want to, if you want to get a sponsorship and you... Uh, Right now, you do have an opportune time. If you do want to get in, if you are a company, if you want to reach, we do not just have only about uh, 40% of our listeners in the Keys. The rest are in the uh, United States and around the world. So right. if you're a national brand or international brand, uh, you may want to try to get in on the ground level. Uh, now would be the time. Yep, now would absolutely. be the time. If you don't, uh, if you don't feel that, I, I, we're not like a local radio station. Uh, it would be good, I, actually, people to listen for local companies to get in here because people that have an affinity and do a search will get Florida Keys Bartender. Um, like I said, we well, were talking about it. They're, they're, the they're searches Keys Bartender. Florida Keys Bartender. We're the Keys Bartender. It's always going to be the Keys Bartender. The bar- but if you do a bartender. search of the Florida Keys, we'll be in there under Florida Keys Bartender. So then we'll, you'll have an opportunity to feature your services or your products here. And then there's plenty of great companies down here. Right. Um, and we can give you some live plugs and we can take care of your business. Be happy to plug you. Absolutely. Again, We're happy to plug you. And no, all the is if ways you will need to be plugged. Here, what? You can prove I just that you've left us a review on any of our hubs. Yeah. Then on our charters, we would be willing to give you a discounted rate. Well, I think you can offer that if you there want. You go. Yeah, yeah. You know. What kind of discount are you talking about? 15, 20%, 15, 20% more than our locals get down here. If you're an avid listener and you come down here and vacation on a half day, full day, see the keys kind of charter, the boat's all yours with you and your family. We give you a discount for showing us that you actually are a listener and you have left us a review. Okay. And the first couple, let's say, if you ever honor the first two, 50%. No, I'll go on the cruise with him. I'm That's what I'm saying. I'll go on the cruise with him. You offer the same deal Absolutely. you do. Absolutely. I'll go, we'll on, go on, on the cruise, cruise with him, with you. and uh, we'll do maybe all three. We'll of do a, do a we'll do a podcast. podcast. We'll do a floating yeah. podcast. Absolutely. Uh, we'll include you if you want to do it. But uh, we will probably that offer. We're we're, we're not. Uh, we're moving ahead. Yeah, we're not quite there yet. We're moving. Quite. We're moving ahead, and we know we're going to be there eventually. So if you want to. Jump on that wagon. Get on there now. A little later, it could be kind of crowded. And I apologize. I do appreciate everyone listening. We uh, we do have a Patreon page, but I'm not worrying about that. We're going to try to raise all our money through advertising. Some people eschew advertising and go through Patreon. I'm not. Uh, I'm trying to expand the listenership where we use advertising to drive uh, listenership, yep. not. Uh, Patronage. Mm-hmm. Patreon is great for, especially for, uh, I, I think I think it's fabulous, especially for these specialty podcasts. And I have my favorite ones. I got the Heebie Jeebie Babes. I have a science fiction film podcast. I have the uh, uh, Motivation Podcast with my friend in, in, in England. And there's a couple other ones. There's a wonderful uh, true crime one out of England that's good. And there's a bunch of other ones. And we will... Uh, 
we're, 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 we're not going to do a lot of partnerships with these podcasts. I apologize for that because we do have a media company now. So um, we may do ones uh, locally and we may do other ones depending on what, what it does work out for us. But uh, I'm not being selfish. We're just trying to grow our listenership. We're trying to give the people what they want if they want. And, and still, a review would be nice. Yeah, yes. a review would be nice. Yes. And um, no matter your media, we strive on reviews. Yeah, and we promise, even though we know where we could put bodies, <laughs> we won't put your body, you know, and near anybody else's body. I don't right. know if we've said Is that this right. Before. Wait, did I say it right? Yeah, that's right. The hand that comes from the grave to strangle you—that's <laughs> a—that's uh, a uh, Dwight Schrute. Con- the hand that comes. <laughs> And again, I don't know if we've uh, ever said this or if we've said it multiple times, but if you leave us a review and you have any ideas or forecast on a future topic. Don't leave it on the review. Don't leave it on a review. Send it in an email to uh, the Keys bartender. or are reading our reviews? I read them, but (laughs) I don't necessarily – there's so many websites. I think the media company will help us do that. But there's so many – uh, platforms that were presented on, it's hard for me to access them all the time. Uh, and I'm not saying it's hard for me to access them because I don't have available time to access them. I don't have the ability to do it. Uh, it much with when it comes to technology, I'm like a monkey fu- fucking. Uh, you know, I mean, you could, if you want to go on to Spreaker well, or iHeartRadio and then just imagine picturing iTunes, Jim iTunes or picture me as a blow up dog as a, as, as a monkey humping a football <laughs> then yeah <laughs> I'm more we of should a, make a meme for that I'd be a large monkey <laughs> you are a very large monkey I wouldn't monkey. be a gorilla <laughs> You're exactly six because gorillas, <laughs> gorillas gorillas get up to 500 pounds you know but you would be more like a chimpanzee a very tall like a really tall chimpanzee yeah. I'd be like Caesar right <laughs> and muscular <laughs> Caesar I'm not. I'm not like humongous from. Uh, no, but you know, humongous. Your classes are taken. Go. You ain't a warrior of the wasteland. <laughs> Surrender. Leave. You, you who want to look like me, <laughs> go to spin class. Yeah, spin. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, you know <laughs> what? I'm not. I'm not. Place. I don't think I don't post pictures of myself on Facebook. I don't. I don't do the posing pictures. Maybe we should. Maybe no, we I don't. should put some gym posing. pictures. You know pictures. what's funny? I can't do it because when I was younger, I was thin. And I was self-conscious. And then when I got muscular and big, I don't want to do it because that seems needy. I just want to be me. What if people want to see what you look like? I got to show some pictures. What if uh, we do a calendar shoot? How about some dick pics? (laughs) <laughs> oh, that got off I'll topic that really up, quick. <laughs> Two guys and girls. <laughs> Adults only. They say that adults only. Adults only. Oh, that yeah, makes it better, doesn't it? These, adults only. All the companies, everyone, they do a calendar shoot. We could do a calendar we could do shoot. A calendar shoot. We could make like your June calendar, calendar just be shoot. super we, sweaty. Oh, the cowboy, <laughs> especially the fireman. Since, since we just we just talked about how fucking Africa hot it was the, right uh, now. The bartender with the suspenders. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We could have one where you're humping a football. Ideas. Oh, the football <laughs> ideas. Uh, 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 Oh, wow, I can't believe I'm thinking about that. Right? Yeah, we might have to do it. Oh, a my keys, God. This is the the Keys Bartender calendar like, shoot. Kind of each episode. So, like, you know, our walking jacker, we could just, like, put fake dicks on. Oh, my God. Street, can we walking down the like street? <laughs> walking down the street with the... Um, I'm going to have to use two hands, so... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. That's where your pants fall down. Yep. A- I did have that, you know, when my pants falling down, right? <laughs> No, because I was I was I was watching my weight. No, it was uh, my uh-huh. uh, my 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 wife was saying I was losing so much weight, falling. Out. But it's actually the Velcro on the pants get old because he has Velcro on his pants. No, they got Velcro. guys. There's Velcro. Right, on his pants. Velcro. You know what I'm talking about? These fishing pants. These yeah. shorts. Yeah. No idea. Damn, well, they got shorts. Okay, where I, you can I, cinch I wear them quick in. Dry shorts. They cost a lot of money, but they're. I the wear best a quick dry too. I wear quick. But they have these Velcro so you can tighten them in, especially with fit levels. No. I need bigger thighs and smaller waist. My waist. <laughs> Trying to show off the muscles. <sighs> I'm not trying to show my way. I need bigger thighs. I just, I'm just because I, I don't want. I don't like my. I don't like my pants being. Hey Jim, stuck. how much do you squat? I don't squat. I don't squat. squat. No, I don't squat. No, 
Yeah. Imagine it'd be about 400 pounds. So, yeah, he needs uh, tight thighs so he can show off the muscles. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I do okay. endurance. I'm more endurance. I'm, I'm endurance. Ju- I'm just going to tease you. Endurance. Perfectly. Endurance and power. Endurance I'm just, just going to tease you a little bit about the Velcro thing, though. No, the Velcro actually works. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't need extra gap in your, hey, It's in your fine brain. until it's on your shoes That's all I'm worried about, Jimmy That's all I'm worried about No, no, it's not Okay, I understand <laughs> I'm thinking about what you're saying Can you, can uh, you tie bunny ears still? I could do a one-eared elephant Okay, so yeah, you don't need Velcro yet yeah, on he's, your shoes He's alright, yeah. he's alright Yeah, okay, well, oh my god We're at one hour All right, we, we great. went over we did, we did it great Um <laughs> Um, <laughs> if you, you would like to see pictures of Jim with, with his Velcro shoes, let us know. <laughs> I need that. I don't have Velcro shoes. We'll, we'll add be, that calendar picture. You know, it could be like a December I don't have Velcro picture. shoes. I don't have Velcro shoes. He could he could pose. I did have a Christmas problem tree. at one time. I told you when I started my journey losing weight, I had a problem. Part of it was being older, and the second was having a belly. And leaning over to tie your shoes was much like folding a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was impossible. You're reaching down. And now I can squat down, do it, boom, boom. I mean, I feel really comfortable doing it. I don't have lower back pains and stuff like that, losing uh, a couple pounds. I feel lean and stuff like that. And I I didn't do a lot. And now he Obviously, can, listen to my drinking patterns. I'm, I'm not that strict. Uh, I don't have... Oh, look at it. He, he bends uh, over comfortably. <laughs> you're like Maggie. Maggie Simpson. Right? He bends over comfortably yes. to tighten his Velcro shoes. No, I wish you know I what? Could. I work with a guy. I work with <laughs> Jerry. I work with young, good-looking guys. And they hired another good-looking Jerry, the bus boy, the good-looking Mexican bus boy. I don't know. I haven't seen Jerry him at night. We, when, we don't go there at night. How often do you okay, see Jerry, us there? At Jerry, night? Okay, Jerry works there. He's a nice-looking guy. He brought his <laughs> he brought his cousin in, and Jerry's twenty-four, right? Mm-hmm. And he brought his cousin in, he's 23, his name's Giovanni. And he looks exactly, he looks exactly, Jerry is this buff thing, he's around 5'9", five, 5'10", five, can carry a keg on his shoulder. Make me feel even worse now. I know, I know, no, no. And Giovanni, <laughs> and then Giovanni, his better looking cousin comes into work. And now I'm, I move, I used to see I'm moving down the rank, the fucking ranks. I'm not only 30 years older, I'm not the most fit. Because I had the other Mexican. You do well. The other Mexican. You're, you're more fit than I am, and I'm at I, 28. I know, I know, but when they're, when they're 23. Good God. You don't realize how quick you could get into shape, though. I could get you into shape real quick. I need you to just, start. You need to go to spin class. I hey, I bought a bike the other day. I could, I could get you. Come I'll pick you up. I'll take you to class with me. I'll get you on the road to wellness. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Do I have to cut back on my drinking? Nope. Look at awesome. me. Awesome. Let's go. <laughs> I'm sold. You sold me already. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. Liver, I think we my are. My trip, the, the liver beating workout uh, exercise gym, the bartender, drink and spin. There you go. Ooh. Uh, a non-endorsed exercise regimen. Think, I don't think they would let us drink while we spin there, though. And no, not at Meredith's Hospital, no. not at Baptist. Damn it. No, they won't. Can we borrow their yeah. bicycles? No, no, we can do it. We can do it at a alternative site, though. <laughs> I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to see if they can allow us to do it. I mean, but how about this? After every mile you complete, you get a shot. A shot. You know. Mile. You know how many miles we do it in an hour class? No, about eighteen. I think God, you're going to kill me the first day <laughs> you're I show up your liver. There. You, you're going to be in awesome shape. <laughs> They go, oh, my God, this guy's in awesome shape, but his liver's gone. Dude, I bought my brand new Five bicycle. Times. I rode to Riva and back, and I was about half dead because I went up a slight hill. Did I tell you what I used to do when I, when I first moved down here? I lived on Madrid, which is right around the uh, Circle K. And uh, I, I got down here. I was getting my head straight, and I would ride down the lower Matacumbi on a bike and had a mountain bike, a hybrid mountain bike, and you ride down. It wasn't a road bike. But I rode it just for exercise. I finally got, I was able to do whatever that was, 70 miles? Well, to lower Matt from here is... 77. Mile marker 30 70. miles. There and back. 30 miles. 30 miles, 82. 30 miles. 72. Down. Okay. And then, yeah. 60. 60 right. miles. Yeah. Do 60 miles in about five hours, and then go to an AA meeting in Almorada. Papa Joe <laughs> bought a bike the same day I did. Seven yeah. speed. Mine's probably 12. 
he drove to one oh or rode his bike to one oh six and back. Eight, eight miles, I think it was. Yeah. Well, we're at one oh three. Yeah. So, so six miles. Eight miles, pretty much round trip. And I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? Well, I mean, I, I was I was nowadays. younger. I was I was forty five when I did it. Papa Joe compared to me, twenty eight. I know, I know. I'm forty five. Yeah. I was forty five when I did it. Yeah. And now I'm a it's been a struggle. Now I'm gonna next year I'm thinking I'm actually considering we're doing a long episode. Let's we go. Really are. I gotta get rid of the I, we're mark. gonna do uh I think I'm gonna do the uh the whole uh, uh keys race. And I think I'm gonna do it at one shot. The hundred miles. You're crazy. I could be. But I, I I'll train. I'll do it a couple times. I'll do it a couple times. On how about this woman that's ran from I think Mass all the way to Key West? Mm-hmm. She's on her last final leg right now. She's doing it for uh, opiate addiction awareness yep. because she's had too many family members. Oh, I'm against it. What are you talking? She's doing it for it. For opiate addiction oh, awareness. Wait, oh, good, good. Because she said too many it's family members. It's just like the cancer thing. When someone died. comes up and says, you're doing it for cancer. And I go, I'm joking. Nah. I'm not fucking against cancer. Yeah. That's my response when someone says, we're doing it for cancer. I say, you're an asshole. Because <laughs> cancer's bad. awareness. <laughs> okay? And they look at me like. It's like when you can't say those I'm words out loud. Like, because it's like cancer. Cancer. It's a bad word. You have to whisper. I'm doing it for ass word. cancer. I'm doing it for ass cancer. Uh, but no, next year, I'm going to make a bold statement right now. Let's let's hear it. I'm going to do the it's whole gonna ride. I'm going to do the whole. I'm going to do the whole ride. I'm I'm hoping if they let me, that they let me do the whole ride by uh the whole ride by myself. I know there's people that run the whole way. The run. Yeah. The hundred miles. I, I'm going to bike the hundred. I think it's a hundred miles. Hundred and two miles. Yeah. 102 miles. I'll bike to 102 miles, and then we'll do a show from Key West, and uh, I'll, I'll try to time it, and I'll talk to uh, uh, 43 Keys Media, and we'll try to do a show and get everyone down there. And maybe you'll be in the van, and I'll stop, and we'll talk, and maybe maybe I can I can clip on and do. Uh, Where are we going to be in a van? Where are we getting in the van? van? You're going to follow me. We gotta we gotta get a van. I'll get a van. We'll get a sponsor. I got a truck. <laughs> no, we my get, truck's no, wait. got the one twenty outlet in it. No, one I, of our. I'm just. I mean, hey, next year we're still on the air. We'll have a fucking sponsor, <laughs> and, and you'll be in there, and you guys, uh, we'll have a driver, yeah. and you guys will do the sound, and you're gonna, and I'll, uh, we'll probably figure out how we can get it connected. Hey, but I thought you were gonna get me into shape. I might do it with you. Okay, well then I can't make a statement for you. I gotta ride. Can I, I make I a gotta statement ride for you? Van. Sure. Tyler and I going to do a hundred miles by a hundred miles all the way in Key West. All right, so what night. time are your spin classes? I have to be at work early in the morning. Uh, not that early, I guess. I mean, my earliest one's nine. I could push my entry time in back. Nine. Uh, uh, Sunday tomorrow I do one at six thirty a.m. p.m. Oh, I was going to say I'm I don't in. That early. I'm filling in. I'm going to probably pick up. I'm going to pick up another class, and uh, hopefully, let's get more listeners and stuff like that. I could do more spin classes. Do a I'm still always going to bartend, but I may cut back on some of the bartending so I could do more shows. I mean, get like three, four shows a week. And uh, get, uh, and you can see what uh, a lot of drinking and exercise gets you. Yeah. There you go. See what happens. And you follow us a little longer, you'll see if it actually has your longevity or it follow uh, Tyler's gets me to a. Uh, yes. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. The, uh, see if Tyler gets crushed by the 56 year old man. Oh, you're half my age. Without already a doubt. You're half my age. I turned 29 at the end of this month. Okay, you're about half my age. You're about half my age. That's still because I'm, I'm 58, but once it gets, it gets sad when I'm 70. Yeah, but you could kick my ass right now riding a No, bike no, no, but it's still, 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 still in my prime. It's sad when it's 70. You're still young. You got a lot. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I need to start to now. You got I, I started <laughs> doing No, no, not true. Not true. I didn't start working out until I was um, 38, 38, 38, 39. F- so I need to F- start F- FG is 71. And she's still kicking it. And she could probably kick half no, of our No, when you started, when you started. <laughs> she could kick my I'm talking, ass. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about when you started. And you could always start it. 
if you don't have a major disability, you can always start it. We we started signing off about 20 minutes ago. I know. We really did. It went Here's for a thing. really long time. Is I went up there. We spent a day walking around an iron ore ship up there. Up there and FG was with us. Yes. I may have had to push her up a couple of flights of stairs, but this woman was giving me a run for my money inside this iron ore ship. I had to keep up with her and make sure she kept going, even though she was like, hey, are you keeping up? I'm like, Ma- mom's got iron ore. What Ma- are you talking Ma- about? An iron ore ship? They iron ore ship? Well, yeah. Iron, iron ore. One of oh, the you were taking ships. a tour yes. of an iron ore of ship. Of an iron ore ship. Ah, that would be, oh, goodness. With Ir- the, Ed- the Irvin Fitzgerald and iron ore ship? What's that? Was the Edmund Fitzgerald? Yes, the Edmund Fitzgerald was an iron iron ore ship, and this was the Irving. Oh well, gosh, something Irving. Irvin. Irvin. Oh well, I I did I ever tell you like on New Year's Eve, a buddy of mine would just read the uh, lyrics to uh, the wreck of the Edmund. William P. Irvin. Okay. Listen, we got it. Oh, my God. We oh, really we have to sign, sign off. Guys, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Leave, leave us reviews. Leave, leave us review reviews. Leave for us. Um, oh, wait. Let's hit Jim, can you hit do the, the button. Hip, can you do the sound for the hypnosis? It's a... Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you guys. Good night. Thank you. Summer's almost over, but at Old Navy, the styles are as hot as ever. Get to Old Navy now for 30% off all jeans, 40% off all dresses, and 50% off all tees. That's right. Get 30, 40, and 50% off all your favorite styles for the whole family, plus up to 75% off clearance. Hurry in fast. These deals won't last. The sale ends soon at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid in-store 822 to 828 and online 822 to 824. Excludes in-store clearance, bubbles, active, licensed, and men's package tees. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Who are you?